It's been a while since I last addressed Didi. And then I came across this article, or at least this article came my way, that was posted up on the New York Post about what happened at a Texas university. So Texas A&M ended up clearing some DEI offices. And when they say clear, basically, they probably either put them on leave or just flat out probably fired them. I'm not sure, but they said they just cleared it of anything DEI related. Now, if y'all are unaware, Governor Wills, aka Greg Abbott, actually signed a state law back in, I believe, June of last year, where they said they were banning DEI practices in various places, including college campuses. And apparently this school did not abide by said law, and these were the consequences. So I'm gonna go ahead and read this article coming from the New York Post, and it was dated April 3rd, 2024. The University of Texas at Austin laid off dozens of employees who worked in their diversity, equity, and inclusion, or DEI, or as I like to call it, DD, programs to comply with a new state law, to, according to a report. University of Texas at Austin President Jay Hartzell announced Tuesday the school's Division of Campus and Community Engagement is being dissolved and its programs and funding transferred to other divisions. The announcement comes as the university works to comply with a new Texas law that came into effect January 1st, which effectively dissolved DEI institutions at public colleges and universities throughout the state. The Austin American Statesman reported that a person with knowledge about the situation said 60 positions that were related to DEI work were eliminated at UT Austin. The law mandates that all governing boards of public colleges and universities ensure that their institutions prohibit the establishment and maintenance of a DEI office and the issues of DEI statements. In addition, hiring practices and training are no longer able to use DEI statements. I recognize that strong feelings have surrounded SB 17 from the beginning and will shape many longhorn perceptions of these measures, Hartzell wrote in reference to the new law. It is also important that this continues to be a welcoming, supportive community for all. In the message, Hartzell said student facing, job, facing jobs will remain throughout the rest of the semester and that laid off employees could apply for other positions at the university. Well, what if, there is, well, what if the jobs that they're applying for doesn't fit the criteria fit wherever they, uh, where their talents would be used? They're just applying for a job they wouldn't even qualify for if you really be honest with yourselves. The firings came after State Senator Brandon Creighton outlined expectations on how universities will comply with the state law. He wrote a letter expressing the serious nature of the bill, saying that the measure mandates a fundamental shift in the operation of our higher education institutions. He added that universities are expected to facilitate a merit-based environment. Now, I'm going to go into a little bit more detail about that because they keep saying that they want everything to be very merit-based, but there is a reason why a particular group within a group does not like DEI. And I had to go and look up some things. I said, like, where's all the pushback coming from and all this type of things. But you'll see what I mean as we go forward. Because it doesn't have anything to do with a merit-based thing. Trust me. That's, what, that's the cover they use. But that's not it. Furthermore, he explained that the Texas Senate Committee on Education is expected to hold a hearing in May, probing chancellors and general counselors of higher education institutions to show how their universities are complying with the law. If universities fail to comply with the state law, they could lose funding. Among five specific, among five specific questions on compliance, university spokespeople are expected to explain. How has your institution ensured that there are no DEI offices or officers on campus or no individuals or organizations performing the duties of a DEI office or officer? Cultural graduations were another casualty of the effect of the law prompting outrage from some students when the university's Multicultural Engagement Center or EMC was closed in compliance with the state's law, black graduation, Latina graduation, and graduation ceremonies were impacted as a result. Now, I never heard <coughs> of it being broke down like that before, but okay. Representative Dan Crenshaw of Texas introduced a bill to freeze federal funding 
to colleges and universities that force students to sign or make statements on DEI. The University of Florida fired all of its DEI employees in compliance with state law last week. I'm not surprised by that because look at who's running the state of Florida. So they're basically telling you on yourselves right here that they are very, very, very much anti-DEI and will go all the way as far as clearing all those things out in order to ensure that that does not come to fruition or if it's already there you better find a way to get it out of there before we clear it out in the way we want it to now remember at the beginning when i said it's oh, well somewhere in the middle part of the article is more than them saying oh it's just a they want a fair and merit-based system don't let them trick you with that so what I did was I said, let me just go in here and look up, you know, things about like with DEI and certain things in particular. And I found that a lot of the people that give the most pushback against DEI are white men. So when I typed that a certain some keywords into Google, I came across an article on Forbes that was dated March 30th, 2022. Yes, we're talking about a little over two years ago. And it was titled, White Men Are Feeling Left Out of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. Why Should We Care and What Should We Do? And it was an article written up, but it also turned into an interview with some experts who really knew how to explain this. But it was one part of the article, and it was before they got to the interview part, that really stuck out to me. And you can see it screenshotted right there. It says, white men hold most leadership positions and decision-making power in U.S. society and globally. So at first glance, it may seem surprising to learn that they are feeling excluded from anything. But according to the white men's leadership study, they actually that actually is a thing. A study of white men and DEI, nearly 70% report feeling quote unquote forgotten by diversity, equity, and inclusion efforts. Feeling uncertain about whether DEI includes them is the main reason they say they either disengage or are not as committed to it as others in their organization. Now keep this in mind. At the beginning of that paragraph, it said they hold the most leadership position and decision-making powers in the U.S. society and globally. But then it comes down to the bottom part where they feel excluded from it. But you own most of the power. You own most of the leadership positions or the most uh, decision-making power, like it says, in the U.S., but that's not enough of them. They want to have an autonomy on every sector as much as possible. And they feel with this DEI thing that is encroaching on that. They hate it. That's really what it boils down to is the lack of control over almost everything that they can feel they can get their greedy hands on. Because all you got to do is look at the people who keep pushing back against this the most. It's mainly always them. And then I said, let me go ahead and decide to take it a step further. And I was like, what again is the backlash? And then I came across this little small excerpt from a website called sap.com. And it was called why DEI backlash exists and what to do about it. And it was three factors that came across it. And that first one they mentioned was the one that I said I knew what it was. It says DEI experts point to common sources that underlie resistance, including a feeling of loss of control or autonomy, which is the, the ironically the first one they list because that's the main one. Then it goes on to a misunderstanding of the virtue of colorblindness. They don't misunderstand it. They know exactly what it is and a belief that social equalities have already been addressed. So they feel like we've already talked about equality so many times. Why do we have to keep addressing it in their Like, again, the way we would see equality as black people and the way they see it is it, is we're looking to, through two different lenses. I've always said that. Now, keep in mind, DEI is not a new concept. This is something that was birthed practically out of affirmative action, which was signed into law by John F. Kennedy. A, a white man at that something that they created now they want to repeal and re basically reverse and like i said anything that they come up with like this whether it's affirmative action crt and now dei 
it has their name on it every single time, but they have to find a low hanging fruit to go after and it's usually us. We could be in the mix in the bunch of every other type of group we could think of that will quote unquote benefit from DEI, but they're gonna make sure to attack black people. They're gonna uh, make sure to attack black first and foremost before they go to anyone else. Even if they don't go to anyone else, they know they can go further than let's go ahead and attack black people first, even though we had no decision in creating it and for a lot of pur and nice intensive purposes don't even benefit from it but again because we're the low-hanging fruit that's who they decide they have to want to go after they are not slick by any means of the word but they'll try oh they will try and have tried so I just wanted to pinpoint that out there. I wanted, like I said, I wanted to take it a step further beyond just what the original article said, because I just really wanted to know to get a breakdown of where this is coming from. And like I said, it's exactly what I thought it was. It's because they don't have control. Like I said, they have a loss of control and autonomy. They already own most of the structure, but that's not enough for them to just own it. They have to facilitate every part of what they own. And when they feel like they're losing that part of control, thus that means they're losing a part of this system, a system that has kept them upheld for so long. They know exactly what it is. They know it's crumbling too, and that also scares the hell out of them. Well, I mean, I don't know what to say. It is what it is. Now, let me end it off with this. Let's hypothetically say that, you know, that 70% of white men who felt like they were excluded from DEI, let's say it said 7%, which means a very small minority of them feel that DEI excludes them while the other 93% feels like, you know, it, it benefits them. How much would you guarantee based on the part when I read about the backlash because they have no control or autonomy, it would be because they feel like now they have cornered the DEI market. If they felt affirmative action CRT or DEI was to benefit them, then they would have no problem with it. If they felt like they had not, not benefit, if they felt like they can control it, they would have no problem with it. That's partially why they got rid of affirmative action, even though they benefit from it heavily along with white women, why they got rid of CRT or why that's not a talking point anymore even though they benefited from it and mainly white women and why they don't like DEI because they don't control it or they feel like they don't have a, a corner market of it. Whatever it is, they feel they do not control or have a good chunk of. And as far as power goes, they do not agree with it. And then that's when they start making up all these things. And then they throw things out there at the wall to see what sticks. And of course, like metal to a magnet, you have these fools out here that will believe everything that they say when it comes about it. I'm telling you, if DEI or when, if if ever if DEI goes away, they're going to have another something like Didi in the background waiting to be used. And they're going to do the same exact thing with that, too. It's a literally a wash, rinse, repeat. So, again, the reason why they're upset is because they don't have an autonomy or control or a market control of DEI. If they did, this would definitely not be an issue for them.